Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Mandy Davis, a former school principal turned homeschool mom, just here sharing all of the resources, inspiration, and support. Whether you're a new homeschooler, a veteran homeschooler, or just considering that option of homeschooling for your family. I am so excited to talk today about reading. Um, I'm going to come on back here a different day to talk about starting reading, reading aloud, and reading with toddlers. But today's special focus is strategies on raising readers when your children don't like to read. I think that it's hard because we know how important reading is and how it opens just the book to all other avenues of learning. But it's not often talked about how kids do not innately love reading. So while we're pushing these ideals of read a lot to your children, read aloud when they're little, this doesn't ensure that when they're at that mid-primary grade level, they're going to naturally just take to books. For me and my family, this was definitely a struggle. My oldest daughter was a lot like me and a lot a lot like what I would expect um, from being read to so often as a child and toddler. Um, she hit those early mid-primary years and her reading both took off and her love for books grew and grew. Enter my second daughter. Uh, Clara always loved read alouds when she was an itty bitty but kind of that early to mid primary years, first to second grade, there wasn't a love to find books, to read books, to spend time reading books even together. In fact, I would say, um, even as we continued read aloud, her interest for reading kept going down and it was hard to watch. It was hard to watch her want to do anything aside of reading books. And knowing how important reading is and how important it is to just the overall learning process, I had concerns. It's not talked about enough that this is actually way more of a normal situation than my oldest daughter. So many different aspects can affect our children and their love of reading. There's gifted readers, there's reluctant readers, there are children um, who are neurodivergent learners. There are children that have English as a second language. There are children who have all different um, behavioral approaches, auditory approaches, visual approaches affecting how they think about reading. And then you just also have that piece of, I don't like this activity. So as moms, um, how can we address this and bring a love of reading to those reluctant readers. Let's go ahead and dive into these tips and strategies. You're going to notice all of these tips and strategies have a very common message, and that is give the control to your children. The more we put rules around reading, the more it feels like something we have to do, the more it feels like we're being graded upon it, or it's at all connected to our achievement, the less our children are going to understand that reading can be a true enjoyment. So first, let your children choose what they read. Now, you will watch your children choose books far above their grade level. When they do it, it's okay to read these books together, um, to listen to these books, and spend a lot of time diving into the meanings um, behind the words. It's going to be a slower read, and that's okay. You're also going to watch your children pick books far below their grade level. This is great. It builds confidence. It has, every time you reread a book, you'll find new decoding, new vocabulary, and it has just this love of reading being built. They're loving these specific books for a reason. So we want to continue to encourage any books um, as, a great option for a reading time. So picture books have no age limit. Um, the harder books, we can connect and spend time reading together. And then if you're watching your child read the same book over and over, that's great as well. So we can get into deeper skills that maybe they didn't hit the first time. Overall, let your children pick the books and just encourage reading to read and enjoy. Next, let your children dive into diverse reading material. 
It's okay if they want to only read comic books, magazines, and newspapers for a period of time. Cookbooks, that counts as reading too. Menus, there's so many different reading opportunities that we might think to ourselves, they're not having an extended period of reading deep material. That's okay. Remember that there's different reading goals and lessons that come out of reading different materials. So just go ahead and support and promote reading for reading's sake. All of those diverse materials are a wonderful asset and spending time in different corners of the library and the bookstore to introduce your children to all of these different diverse methods of reading might just introduce them to a style of reading that they really love. Keep in mind that our children are not introduced to new genres, to new and diverse reading materials until we make that connection for it and with them. Next, welcome technology. Audiobooks, podcasts, listening to a book can have just as many um, linguistic benefits as reading a book yourself. And with that, it can pull children into stories and the art of storytelling. Um, in our family, we specifically love listening to audiobooks together or read aloud time. Pulling in technology, use it to kindle that flame, that love of reading. Um, it, it can, I, I know that when we consider technology and all the different technology apps and programs that exist, it can feel at times as though we are replacing that art and love of opening a library book, opening a new book um, with technology. But keep in mind, just like diverse reading materials, reading on our tablets, listening to books on our Alexa systems, we're still getting that advantage of reading. Now I touched on this one when I shared to let your children choose their books, but celebrate the books they love. Read and reread the stories they love. Not only is this teaching your children a more every time in a different depth of learning, but it will also teach you areas that they love. You might be surprised to learn, okay, we've read this book 20 times. What's the connection? Why do they love this book so much? Is it the genre? Is it the main character? And then let's go and find more books in that area and connect it back. Let's make a book to book connection. And now we've just taken that learning to the next level with our children. And lastly, and most importantly, remove all of the pressure. When we make reading feel like a chore to our children, they're going to look at reading as though it is a chore. When we make reading feel like it has rigid boundaries and guidelines and rules, our children will just not enjoy that reading process. The more we can make reading an enjoyment and take out all of the rules, the more our children will find their natural love of reading. And for you parents, Remember that our role is not to dictate what reading should look like or be for our children, but watch them develop their individual love of reading and support it. Let's let go of all the guilt and pressure that reading and a love of reading is natural and will only look one way. The journey is long and we all have those moments we remember um, reading with a parent or a loved one when we were little, our very favorite books, and that moment that we fell in love with a character, a book, or the art itself of reading. Our children are going to go through the same journey and let's just stand by them, champion them, and remember this is all very normal. Give your children the space and encouragement to carve out their own reading path and watch them fall in love with reading. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe to never miss another video. And I'll see you next time.